Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. I proudly introduce to you Andrea. Andrea is a young woman in her mid-twenties. And right now you're about to hear her personal story of her battle with deep depression and suicide. I want you to hear her story and then watch the shift in the atmosphere as she begins to admonish the people in the audience. To get to know you and I just have three questions to interact with you on. The first one, what was happening in your life about three years ago? Um, so about three years ago, I um, was very depressed and battling, you know, suicidal thoughts. And um, I was drinking a lot um, almost every single day um, just to feel normal. Um, and I had a lot of friends, but I felt really lonely. Like nobody really understood and nobody really cared to listen. So, um, I just felt really alone. And, um, I was actually engaged at the time, but, um, even with him, it was just, he couldn't, he tried to do things to make me feel better, but it, you know, it was a problem inside. So, um, yeah, I was just really in a dark place, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, so. And since then, what has happened? What has God done in your life to change your heart, change your perspective? Um, well, my mom kept asking me to go to church with her, and she had been doing that for years, actually, like several years, and I kept saying no. Um, but one Sunday, I... I just said, fine. She gave me the puppy dog eyes and was like, do it for your mother. And I was like, okay, fine, I'll do it. And uh, I think I heard the gospel for the first time, really, that Sunday. And um, I just remember, I, I, I believe I was born again in that moment. Like, I, I knew that I was like a condemned sinner and that, um, you know, I had just really, I was just, lost and there was nothing that I could do about it but then in the, the gospel came in and was like but Jesus died for those sins and um, there's hope um, if you put your trust in him so I, I did it that day and um, things just immediately started changing I remember the first thing he told me to do was start cleaning up your space my room was a, a mess all the time and put some clothes on because I used to you know dress like the world used to dress and um, things just started changing. There was someone that I really uh, had a lot of bitterness towards. Uh, if you met me and was near me long enough, you were going to hear the sob story of how horrible this person was to me my whole life. And I was able to forgive him and move past that. And he just helped me to get sober and to walk away from all the dead things in my life, the dead relationships and and just the things that were never really supposed to be there. So he's he's definitely really changed my life completely. It's not perfect, and in fact, it's been really difficult a lot of the times. But he's just there for me every step of the way, and I really appreciate it. I mean, at any time of the day, he's there and will listen. So that's been really helpful, because it could be 1 o'clock in the morning, and I can talk to God. So, yeah. So you shared a little bit how God has regenerated your heart and started cleaning things up. Three years later, how, how do you see, looking back, on God's work in your life, and God's grace in your life, and um, how do you see things today? How has God changed you? Um, he's just showing me each and every day how I can be a better person for other people. Um, I always thought that I was the victim in life, but I, I didn't realize that I was actually running around hurting people too, and that I was really selfish. And and so he's just showing me how I can actually give more and be more thankful, actually, um, towards like my my mom and you know um, the the small friends that I do have or the the church family that I am beginning to have, and just give more instead of take so much. And um, I'm not depressed actually. But that moment that I walked out of church, I was never actually depressed again. Um, obviously, we have down days, but not serious, you know, in a whole depression. That's not happened to me since then. Um, I love my myself. 
I had never loved myself. I thought I was the worst human in the world, just the ugliest little line of being you could ever see. And now I just, I love myself, but not in a, you know, in like a prideful way. I just like who I am. I'm okay with me and I'm okay with being alone. Um, I still sometimes get tempted to go back to those old pacifiers, but I know that I don't have to and I haven't. Um, so he's just really changed my outlook on life. Um, my outlook on suffering is so different. Like when things happen to me, I just, I can hear it in the back of my head that God uses everything for us and for his glory. So it's not just meaningless. Suffering isn't meaningless. Death isn't meaningless. Um, pain isn't. And so that's, that's a blessing because you look around and so many people are suffering and they don't know why or they don't think that it means anything. They're like, oh, just life sucks. And I'm like, no, it doesn't have to. So, um, yeah, he's just changed my perspective and given me joy and peace that I've just never known. So, yeah. I know you have a few passages you want to share. I think they're on your paper. Yeah, they're on Encourage page. us. Yeah, what things that spoke to you. So, um... Like I mentioned, I was engaged, so I had I ended up breaking that off, and um, I had to walk away from a lot of friendships, and um, even just trying to get sober was extremely difficult. And a passage that really helped me um, to remember that it's worth it was Psalms 26, 5 through 6, and it says, They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seeds, shall, shall doubtless... Come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. And that really helped me to remember that even though there's a lot of tears right now and a lot of pain and a lot of difficult things that I had to do at first, um, it's going to be worth it. And um, I'm going to have fruit from all of that work. And then um, I guess I just wanted to say to anybody who felt like um, they were too dirty or too lost, too unclean or bad or evil, or that they've just done something that there's just no way that I could ever be saved. That's not true. I believe that there's room at the cross for everybody. Every sin out there can be forgiven and wiped clean because God is gracious and merciful. That's why he gives us time because he wants us to come to him. So I just wanted to say that. And then, um, I have a message for any unbelievers or backsliders. It's Isaiah 1, 18. It says, Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be as red as crimson, they shall be like wool. I believe that God is always listening to anybody who, who will just admit where they're at in life, that maybe they're not where they portray themselves to be or where they wish that they were if you're just honest with him he will forgive you and he will cleanse you of the things that you're dealing with because our lot in life is peace joy strength it's self-control and patience it isn't anxiety depression um just having you know mental breakdowns that's not our lot as christian as christians so if you're not a Christian, I want you to know that that's what you can find in Christ. But if you are a Christian and you're experiencing those things, that's not our lot. You just have to go to God and he can heal you of these things. And then um, for the believer, I just want you to believe that you really are forgiven. Nothing that you've done. He's not holding it in the background and trying to, he's not going to bring it up randomly or or do what humans do sometimes when we say we forgive, but we didn't really forgive you. God really forgives us. And that passage is um, Psalms 103, 10 through 12. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he removed his transgressions from us. So I just wanted to give that message to everybody in here. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate your boldness there. I hope that really blessed you. I'm so proud of Andrea, I don't know what to do. But let me share this with you. Many of you go through depression. Many of you suffer from suicidal thoughts. 
you know, Rashad and I, we, uh, we were talking on the phone the other night. And it, the, the benefit that we have is some of us in our online church go to two churches. We go to a local church and we attend our online church together. And there are issues that we address more deeply, more personally here in our group. Yet, on the other hand, they benefit who have a local church to go to as well because they have a family of believers to gather with. Online, we concentrate on the inner the inner battles that we deal with. We, we deal with battling the works of darkness, the, the, the principalities and the demonic forces that come against us. But I want to share with you that we are learning to do warfare together. We're learning to win. We are helping each other and reinforcing one another in our online church. And Andrea is a force to be reckoned with. So I ask you, will you be a force to reckon with? Or when the enemy rears his ugly head, will you turn tail and run? You have to learn spiritual warfare. And if you don't want to gather with believers, you have to get into the word or else you are a sitting duck. Anyway, God bless you. I hope that helps. If any of you have ever dealt with the feelings of suicide, the feelings of wanting to quit and give up on life, give up on yourself, give up on God, do this. Say, I rebuke those negative emotions in the name of Jesus. I rebuke the spirit of suicide in the name of Jesus. I rebuke depression in the name of Jesus. I rebuke sadness in the name of Jesus. I will not quit. I will not give up. I will not do myself in because God is for me. And if God be for me, who can be against me? I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Speak the word. Take authority. Do all you can do. But make sure that the first work is done, that you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. That's where your power lies. God bless you.